Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Feels weird saying it since I haven't recorded a single damn video since like October. But anyways, like let's get going. Uh, today we're going to talk about Gaming 20 review and Gaming 29 review. Apparently, the double gaming has been confirmed. So we're going to look at some of the options from Manchester City and Arsenal. Then we're going to look at captaincy of options for Gaming 29. And we're going to look into my transfer plans right at the back end of the video. So if you are new here and uh, you want to see my sporadic videos, which I won't make for another year, click subscribe, hit the like button as well. And uh, let's get going into the video. So Gaming 20 review, I got 50 points. I took a negative 8 hit, hit as well. So I got 42 net points, which is really strong in the context of this game week. Any other game week is piss poor. Pack your bags, leave the goddamn country. But no, in a game week where the average is only 26, I nearly doubled the average before the hits. And you might say, like, okay, you had the hits, otherwise, it would have been 50 points. Hear me out. I had one, two, three, four different players who were turned in this team. I brought three of them in that particular week. Pope. Fernandez, Jimenez, all came in Game Week 28. Without them, my only return in the Game Week would have been Joydini. And he had two points written in the stars. Like, I did not expect him to return the way he did against Liverpool. Yes, Lovren was starting, but I was only confident of like, a, even if he did, I would have, I would have been confident of only like a 8-pointer, 9-pointer max. I did not expect him to go into double figures. So that's good. Ings bench. He is closing in on the chopping block. So into two points. Leicester are shite. Webs the two points. I don't know how Brighton keep playing extremely well. And finding a way to not score. Concede a shit goal. And lose the damn match. Either home or away. And that's something. Liverpool... They they may be putting like uh, the guess of the pedal or something. I don't know what the problem is, so I'm just not gonna say it. They conceded three to Watford. They didn't score a single goal. That was an atrocious performance. But everybody has triple Liverpool, so that those three are like that spots. Saiz is the fourth member of the minus eight, aka the clown of the bunch. One point only. I nearly brought in Yota and Doherty for him and Saiz, but I. Because when Vardy was out, I had the cash, so I went for Himnes instead of Yota. And so that allowed, and uh, that didn't leave me enough money to go Doherty. So I went Saiz, and I didn't go Bali either. I went Saiz, so it was like a punch in the gut. But uh, we move on. Now we're going to talk about Game Week 29. So Game Week 29, double Game Week confirmed for Manchester City and Arsenal. So we're going to look at a few of the options, some options which appeal to me and um, a few maybe little differentials that you might not have considered before. So first first up, I'm just going to start with the obvious option, Sergio Aguero. The man doesn't need introduction. A good player in the double game. He loves to double. He scored against Man United before. He scored big against Arsenal before. And yeah, pretty much no explanation really. R rotation and the price point. The only disadvantages, but it's a high risk, high reward situation with Aguero. If you if you're daring to go that high and it pays off, you're in dreamland. And that's it. Now we're gonna move on to Kevin De Bruyne. I, I'm bringing Kevin De Bruyne because of the injury. So apparently, Pep confirmed that he was kind of injured uh, in the last game he played. I think it's the cup final. It's either the cup final or the game before the cup final. I have to relook. So, but the thing here is Kevin De Bruyne is probably a doubt for the derby. And another little thing that Pep said in the presser is leading me towards this particular player. Phil Foden, 5.1 million. Imagine the scenario for a while. So Kevin De Bruyne does not come back in time for the Arsenal game. So he is injured. And Phil Foden gets another goddamn game on the right side of a three-man midfield. Imagine Phil Foden, 5.1 million, playing on the right side of a midfield three in, in a team that is the highest scoring in the league. This is FPL goal. I mean, if everything clicks, 
he could have a 20 point in the double game week. That's all I'm saying. And your rank could go booming up. Like, for my, let's say for my rank, I could go from like 120k to something like that. 50k just because of Phil Foden. Nobody else. Just because of Phil Foden's potential haul. That could happen. Just saying. Another guy that could boost your rank, Rio Maris. Uh, the only problem with him is his uh, minutes. But we can see in the past that he is starting to get a lot more minutes. And here's one interesting thing about Rio Maris. So he has 17 goal contributions in 1,351 minutes. That is a return every 79.5 minutes. Let's compare it with some of the league's highest scoring players who have had a lot of minutes this season. Salah, 21 goal involvement at 102.5 minutes per goal involvement. Mane, 21 at 94.6 minutes per involvement. Jamie Vardy, 23 goal involvement, 95.3 minutes per involvement. Aubameyang, 20 involvement at 110.7 minutes per involvement the league's highest scoring player Kevin De Bruyne has 26 goal involvements at 82.6 minutes so if you look at it that way he's actually performing on par and better than some of the league's best and high scoring players which is a really good sign really it is a high risk high reward because if you get him and he returns your run your rank jumps because I remember the Leicester game, he had an assist, right? I, before that assist, my rank was closing in on 200k. Right at the end, Mara's goal, Jesus assist, my rank went from 200k to 165k. That's what I'm saying. It all it only takes one teeny tiny return, and you are shooting up the ranks. And the last option that I want to talk about is a little bit controversial option because not we have all been burned by him this season, and uh, I don't know if many of us are brave enough to go there again. I'm talking about this guy, Nicolas Otamendi. Hear me out before you click the before you exit the video. Hear me out. Hear me out first. Nicolas Otamendi at five million. He has scored goals before. He scored against Watford. He scored against Man United. He scored, I think, in the cup before. His threat from set pieces is known, is renowned. And you have Man United and Arsenal, both, who can't defend set pieces. And you are looking at a potential goal at 5 million. 5 million. This is the price that many bought Luca Dean, Matt Doherty, Ricardo Pereira last season saying. At 5 million, you're not expecting clean sheets, you're expecting attacking returns. He's at that price. Why not take a punt on And that concludes my Man City assets. And now we move on to Arsenal assets. So the first guy that I want to talk about is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. I mean... I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to mention him as an option because he is probably the best player, the talisman, and all that. We all know that. 11 million captaincy option. We're not, I'm not going to talk about him. Now we move on to the next option. Nicolas Pepe, a punt, a high-risk, high roll punt, just like Rian Mahrez. He's known to explode. He's more of the kind of an explosive kind of player. He's not consistent, but when he returns, he returns big. That's why I said like Nicolas Pepe, but I think... I, I mean, Nicholas Pabé against West Ham is probably the one that I'm targeting. But Nicholas Pabé, I'm not pretty certain of a return of him against Man City. But against West Ham, he could go big. That's all I'm saying. And uh, then there aren't many options after that. Probably my man, Bukayo Saka. Where is he? Here it is. There's Saka. He's playing oppos reverse out of position. But the positions he take is something else. He's always on that left wide flank. Coming in, putting crosses in. Arsenal's highest assist. I, uh, the guy with the most assist for Arsenal in this season. Tierney back, but my personal opinion is that I don't think he will be slotted back into the starting eleven real quick. Given Saka's form. And Tierney has been out for a really, really long time. I'm pretty sure he was out right after I... Right after I made my last video. So that is a long time. 
So Saka, I think he could play both games, but after that, I'm not really sure anymore. And that's it. Apart from that, you have uh, David Luiz. Clean, maybe one clean sheet for Arsenal against West Ham. But the thing with David Luiz is he can always pull off that magical through ball. He's done it before at Chelsea. He's done it before at Arsenal. And uh, he could do it again. But Neno, he is known to produce some saves. He has the save point potential. And as I said that before, I think there's a potential for a, one clean sheet in a double game for Arsenal. And that is a good thing for a 5 million keeper. And that's it for the double game league players. Now, now we're going to talk about the captaincy option. So the first option, obviously Salah. He doesn't have a double game week, yes, but he's against, up against Bournemouth. Salah against Bournemouth. Since his debut, he's faced Bournemouth five times. And every single damn time, he has scored a goal against Bournemouth. We remember the hat-trick, but even before the hat-trick, he's known to return against Bournemouth. And so he's straight in. So is Sadio Mane. Maybe not as frequent scoring against Bournemouth as Salah, but still quality player, and he can return against any opposition. He's in the captaincy captaincy shout. Usually if I had Mane and Salah, I would have kept in Mane most of the time, but this is against Bournemouth, Salah's favourite opponent, so I'm captain in Salah. If I have both, I don't have both. Then we move on to the double game league options. Kevin De Bruyne, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, and here's the thing though, if before the deadline, let's say a city in the know messages me, Real Madrid is going to play at least 150 minutes in this double game week, He'd be my captain instead of any other player in that damn squad. I'll trust him to return against any damn opposition. He's that not good a player. City's second best player this season, in my opinion. And I think he'll return well in the double game week. Whether he plays against Arsenal or United, I think he will return really well. Another option that I want to talk about in terms of captaincy, I think this is controversial. Any Wolves defender against Brighton. Yes, people have a history of uh, captain and defenders and feeling badly, but hear me out for a second. Matt Doherty, he is practically a third striker or a fourth striker in the 3-4-3. He's practically in the box, around the shooting ranges, and he will get a goal or an assist against the Brighton, who are sloppy as F at the back. And here we go on Willy Bolly and Roman size. If you have the guts... If you have the guts, I would stick it out on one of those two. Particularly because of Bryson's set-piece defending. One of the unfortunate ones who sat through 90 minutes of Brighton versus Crystal Palace. And let me tell you, Brighton's set-piece defending is absolutely atrocious. So if Moutinho or Pedro Neto or whoever is taking the corner can whip a beauty or maybe even a half decent delivery into the box. You're screwed because they don't defend well. And that is probably, oh wait, there's one more option. There's one more option for captaincy. Apparently, he, the Messiah is back. The Messiah is back. And he is facing Aston Villa, who practically can't defend as well. They're probably Brighton, but worse. So I would, if I had Vali and I was looking to climb the ranks, I might put the Ambulance on him, but the only problem with him is this form. I don't think he's no goals in 2020. Christian Bloody Bantake has a goal in 2020. Jordan Ayu has a goal in 2020. John Lundstrom has a goal in 2020. Jamie Vardy doesn't have a goal in 2020. I prefer not to speak. I prefer just not to speak. And uh, that's about it for my captaincy options. Now we're moving on to my plans for game 29. So this is how my bus team is currently looking. Henderson and goal ahead of Pope. It's a tough decision because Spurs are toothless. But if you're facing Norwich at home, it's like kind of a guaranteed clean sheet, so to speak. Because they don't really do that well away from home. The defense pick is up really Robertson and Eggs and I know Saiz. So you didn't chew. Stays on the bench because of Leicester's form. Webster stays on the bench because Brighton are horrible. So Zayis gets the nod in midfield. That's a midfield five. And uh, the Maris De Bruyne, double game weeks. I mean, uh, I'm expecting good returns from them. Fernandez, the best player to ever touch the surface of the effing planet. 
I prefer to say no more. Mohamed Salah, current captain, but I could change to someone like Mares. But I'm really tempted to stick with Salah captain. Jimenez, uh, consistency at his best. And he'll probably get the vice captain if I captain the double game player. If I don't, the double game player will have the vice. But he is a really good player and I expect big returns against Brighton. Troidini, back in the form. Sars back. That right flank is absolutely back for Watford. They play before Sars injury, they had a full back and then they have Sar. When Sar got injured, they didn't have a right back as well. Dawson was playing right back. Mariapa was playing right back. Now they have Kiko Famenia back at right back. They have Ismaila Sar at the right wing. And the team is actually starting to function really well. Ducore, Dini, Sa, all have potentials for consistent returns to the next two to three of the fixtures. So they don't look that bad because the Palace away. Palace aren't the best of teams. That's at home, that's the poor, that's the poor form at the moment. So they could sneak a win. Burnley away it could be a good match. Southampton at home, Southampton a bit sloppy recently. And so that's about it for my team. Ings bench, yeah, that is a big one because I ex Let's say Ings score. Saka only needs an assist to match that. Two, two, four. If he plays a, a 60 minutes in both games, that is. That's four. One assist makes it seven. A potential for a clean sheet run them makes it eight. So I'm sticking with the double game play in Saka. The guy with the most assists for Arsenal this season. And a loyal owner since game week eight. So that's about it for this and uh, sorry for being a little rusty, uh, I haven't made a video in so long, I haven't made a blog for my other channels one so long, so it's really weird speaking to the camera again. But anyways, thanks for watching and hopefully I can continue to make videos in the upcoming uh, weeks and I'll see you hopefully, I'll see you on Twitter, follow me and I'll, put the, I'll put, hopefully put the handle up there and uh, I'll see you guys probably next week or on Twitter, till then, sayonara.